Okay, so what we got here, I had a lot of rattling going on every time I hit a bump. Last thing I checked was actually the CV. I placed this about a year ago. Actually, it's right here. You can hear how loose that is. I'm gonna have to change this one out, going with a different brand this time. But you can see, every time I hit a bump, that's where I'm getting it from. Luckily, I haven't used this in four wheel drive recently. Uh, if I did, I don't know that this would actually last very long. So we're gonna jump in here and we'll show you how to take it apart. All right, we got the cap off. We're gonna go ahead and take these tires off. So first, you're gonna take your impact and just get the size that you need. For this ram, it's a 19 millimeter. I'm using the Milwaukee uh, battery powered impact wrench. Uh, this thing is amazing. I'll probably do a review on this soon. Right now we got that off, we can pull this out. Next, we want to start looking underneath here. And what we're going to have to do is actually loosen the upper ball joint. A lot of people I see take off the lower ball joint. You really don't need to take off that. If you do, the whole spindle is going to fall off. But again, it's up to you. This is a lifted uh, Ram 1500, so it's got a whole different spindle on it. But even when it was stock, when I first uh, replaced these, I could still do it with only taking off the top, uh, loosening the top ball joint. Then we will have to loosen the outer tie rod in. And then we're gonna go behind here. We're gonna take off the caliper for the brakes, the rotor. Uh, we actually get the spindle nut off. That'll be the very first thing. Um, and the last, we'll get behind here, loosen up the bolts for the hub assemblies. If you think you might need hub assemblies, um, this would be a great time to do it. So you have to get back into it. If not, we'll just jump in here. We'll do it with just the CV axles. Okay, since we're not changing the calipers themselves, I'm gonna leave these caliper bolts in right here so that way it stays with the with the frame. Uh, there's two bolts back here, they're 21 millimeter. I'm gonna wanna loosen those two, that way I can take the entire brake system off and I'll hang it up and, and hold it there. All right, so after you get these loose, you might have to put a pry bar in between here and pull this apart. Um, that way you can separate it from the rotor. So I'm just gonna take these off and we're gonna hang it up in here so it doesn't fall down. All right, now we can take the rotor off, but make sure, like, obviously my hands are dirty. I'm going to clean my hands first before I touch this rotor. If I touch anywhere in the face on this, uh, on the backside, it's going to mess up my brake pads and get them dirty. And, and once it gets into the brake pads and soaks in that grease, you're not going to get it out. You have to change your pads again because you're going to notice that you're going to have some weak brakes. So again, take these off, hold on to this area, make sure you don't touch the face. All right, now we took off the back mounting bolts from the spindle to the caliper. Uh, we took off the rotor. Uh, we hung everything up so it doesn't fall. I was really careful to make sure that the pads stayed where they were. Hopefully I can just go ahead and just set them right over the pads. It won't have, to, I mean, over the rotor. I won't have to push the pistons back, but if I do it, that's not a big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up while we're, before we put it back together. And now uh, we can take the spindle nut off. For this pickup, this Dodge Ram, it's a uh, 36 millimeter. You really, an impact will really help with that. You still need to put a breaker bar most likely in between these studs to hold it still. If not, the whole thing is gonna spin on you. Um, but I already loosened this one up just so you can see. Go ahead and put your impact on there, spin it backwards, and you're off. Now that that's off, I'm going to take a uh, mallet and I'm going to hit the end of this and loosen the splines up from the half shaft. This is the end of the half shaft itself. So this one's actually already loose, but I'm still going to pound on that a little bit just to push it all the way back. And it's loose. I can already see once I was hitting it, it went sideways. This side popped out, so now it's nice and loose back there. Uh, we'll go ahead and continue on. All right, now we got that loose. We're going to go up here to the upper ball joint. Again, this one's a 13 16 and I have a much different spindle on here than uh, a stock one because of the lift kit. So this is really difficult to get in there. I already loosened this up with just a regular open end wrench. Uh, but you, normally you can get a, a socket in here, but you can see from mine it doesn't. If I put a shallow one on there, the shaft down here is too, too long. Um, but as you're taking them off, you can use an open end wrench. If this whole thing is spinning, like if this down here is spinning where the ball joint uh, on the inside is, uh, you just put another little wrench right here and then twist this one off and it'll hold it still for you. So when we're all done, I'll go through and, and tell you all of the torque specs for all these bolts. If you have a different vehicle, you're gonna wanna look those up and actually get the right torque spec for you. Uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow uh, and then get back into it. So now what we wanna do is we're gonna hit this with a hammer and that should separate these two. And sometimes you're gonna have to give this a pretty good whack. Sometimes it'll fall right out. That's all it took. And then you can take a pry bar inside here and you're gonna separate these two if you need a pry bar. Because of the lift kit, it fell right out. So see, now we're nice and loose. See, as I was working, that thing was gonna fall. I got it hanging. Now that we're loose here, what we wanna do is try to push this back and pull it out. If you're not able to do that, you're gonna to need to loosen 
your uh, outer tie rod in. So just like the ball joint, this is also 13 16 you'll just loosen the bottom, the bottom nut. Same thing, hit it a couple times. You might need to try not to pry on any of these rubber grommets here because that's got all your, your seals in there. If you still can't get it off, then you're gonna have to lower, uh, take off the lower ball joint, but uh, normally you can always get them off without doing that. Uh, lower ball joint's just gonna be down underneath here. You're gonna take that uh, right there, sorry. You're gonna take that off, but then your whole spindle's gonna come out with you. All right, just to show you an example of why you can get this off without having to take off that lower ball joint. If I had the spindle turned the other way, like how I first started, which was more comfortable, I can't get it out. If I turn the steering wheel to the right and pull the spindle over, didn't actually turn the steering wheel, but in that direction, then I can actually get the um, half shaft out or CV axle. Once I had it turned that way, I was able just to push in and then pull up and this thing popped loose. And it comes right around uh, the spindle right here. Now I'm going to change the wheel hub assembly on this one. If you don't want to see that, you can skip ahead and we'll continue on with the CV axle, but I'm actually going to jump in here and show you how to do that while we're at it. Glad when I was planning on doing that because as I was taking it apart, I started finding some pieces from the hub assembly actually coming up, coming off. Uh, so we're going to jump in that right now. So as I'm working on these wheel hub assemblies, if you can see there past all the grease, the heads of this bolt are gone. Trying to spin that off, um, it actually just chewed them off. And I'm going to show you kind of when you run into something like this, a few tricks of what you can do. Uh, of course, you can weld another bolt over. I mean, you can weld a socket over it. You can ruin the socket, but you can weld it over top of it, and then you can turn it off and it'll have a nice strong grip. Um, but I'll show you another way uh, that you can get through this. So what I like to do when I have something like this happen, when all the, the corners of your bolt have stripped off, instead of using a five-point socket, I'll use a, sorry, instead of using a six-point socket, I'll use a 12-point socket like this one here. So you can see it's got all these extra little grooves and splines on it. I'll just go down one size, um, whether that's metric or standard, uh, whatever's closest that I can put over the top of that bolt. Then I'll take a big sledgehammer and start hammering that on until not I get a little bit of a bite till I get all the way down. I mean, I really cut into those, uh, into that bolt head until I get all the way to the base of it. And then, I'm, then I can put on a breaker bar, turn it off. Don't, of course, this is not an impact rated socket right here, uh, but don't use, even if you had one, don't use an impact. Use a breaker bar and then slowly push on it until you get it loose. But again, before you start with that, you gotta take, some PB blaster again, and that's gonna help you start that off. Give it about at least 20 minutes before you start. All right, you just wanna be careful as you're doing this because if you hit this wrong and you go sideways, you start chewing out more of the, the metal on the, on the outside of that bolt, just gonna make this job a lot harder. So I started this already uh, without holding the camera. Uh, so I started a few taps on it. So I just came here and started staged as center as you can and it, slowly you'll feel it kind of rock back and forth and start digging into that bolt. Then once you're there, you're going to come in with your sledgehammer, really line up, pull back, bam, and wait, and wait. And make sure that when you're hitting that, you're watching it, you're not going all to the side so much it's going to pop off. You want to make sure you get this all the way on straight, all the way to the base of that, that bolt, okay? All right, here's the other side. Luckily for, in this case scenario, I can actually see the other side of the bolt. So as I'm pulling down on this, I'm pushing, pushing. I'm not really seeing it move yet, but I can feel that in between all those, that 12 points of that, that socket is starting to uh, kind of chew up and make a, a tighter grip in there because that metal is chewing off. I'm going to keep going here and there, it just broke loose. There it goes. We got it. So this wheel hub assembly, it takes a three quarter socket or 19, uh, I was using a three quarter, stripped it off. When I went down, I went down to the side, went to 11 16 You can see I hammered it on to an all the way to base and I put a little bit of PB blaster right here. It soaked that up, it came right off. Okay, now I got everything put together. I put three bolts in, these are gonna be torqued down to 140 foot pounds. And you want to make sure that's foot pounds, not inch pounds. So when you put this on, don't forget your dust plate. There's a slot right here. It needs to line up with your ABS wheel sensor that's right here. Uh, as well as <clears throat> when you put the wheel bearing on, that's how you line the wheel bearing up as well because there's kind of a groove right here in the spindle. So that way everything lines together with this ABS wire. Uh, so again, we'll torque that down to 140. Uh, and then we'll move on to putting in the CV axle back into the hub. Now when you go to torque these, don't forget you can put an extension on there if you need one. 
uh, don't put a knuckle on there because if you don't keep a 90 degree angle you're going to change the torque spec of what it is it has to be at 90 degrees whenever you're using uh, a different setup All right, we're back underneath the pickup. If you're lucky, you'll be able to pull in the CV axle and just pull it a bunch of times like that, and it might come out. Um, most often it won't. You can already see there's always, always rust in this area. Um, like I said, I've already replaced these about a year ago. I put anesthesia on them just a little bit. I wouldn't put a ton, no Loctite, that's for sure. Uh, just to make it to where, or a little bit of grease or something, just so that way if you ever take them off again, they're not seized up. Um, so usually what you're gonna have to do is take a hammer, you're gonna have to hit this direction and usually it'll just pop that that seal off uh, there's a little pin as, a, as you shove it back in it kind of it's a locking pin um, and that's usually what where it gets stuck so what we're gonna do is tap this a few times and you can give it some good love uh, in order to knock it loose all right that one was stuck on there actually pretty good um, if at first you don't succeed get a bigger hammer and this stuff oh my god this PB blaster stuff it is phenomenal they say sometimes you gotta wait like a whole day you spray it on there nah I say 20, 30 minutes, it makes a huge difference. I, I couldn't get it loose, sprayed this stuff up there, even though you can't really see the splines, spray a little bit of this PB blaster on there, wait about 20 minutes, I hit it two or three more times, came right out. Of course, it was a bigger hammer, but this definitely was the reason. So now that we got that loose, again, if you can, you're just gonna grab this shaft, you're gonna pull it back and forth, back and forth, see if you can just pull it out. If not, you're gonna have to get under there and tap it out. Okay, so now, just pull it out like that. Okay, what I decided to go with is the DTA CV axles. Like I said, the other ones I just put on, they only lasted about a year, about 10,000 miles. I know this truck is lifted. I know I'm running 37s, but I should not be knocking out in 10,000 miles. It's mostly all highway driving, occasional off-road, uh, but even at that, the off-road is most often just the dirt roads. I'm not doing any crazy wheeling. I'm not doing mudding like I used to. They should have lasted longer than that. Those were Duralast Golds. Uh, they just did not last at all. Um, same with the wheel hub assemblies that I did last year. Those were TRQ. They did not hold up either. They all went to junk on me. Um, so now I went Timken. Uh, I'll put the Timken uh, hub assemblies in. Not endorsed by any of these guys. It's just what I'm trying. Uh, the DTA, it's, it's really, really good. Uh, I, I know I wanted to go to Cardone. I wanted to try those. Uh, but although I don't know if it's because of COVID or what it was, couldn't get a hold of them. I looked for them for all different models on every website I could. Um, I just could not find what I needed for my truck. Uh, the only other ones that are out there are the RVC or RCVs. They're like a solid axle. Uh, they're about $1,000 each side. Uh, I didn't really want to do that. So we're going to throw these on there, and I think we're going to do better because, I mean, the OEM ones, they, they lasted even longer. Even when I had the lift kit on for a while after that, they still perform better even after they've been on the truck for years. Uh, this lift kit, uh, it actually has a whole drop spindle. I did not use the spacers up front. I used Bilstein 5000, I think it's 5000, the Bilstein adjustable struts. Uh, so the angles on this, on all of my uh, tie rod ends and my half shafts, it's almost all spec to, to uh, when it was stock. They're not crazy articulated. Like I said, I know there's stress on this. Uh, you can blow me up in the comment if you want, but again, anything should last better than 10,000 miles. So here we go. So here's the DTA axle. It's actually packaged really well. Nice uh, wrap around it with some good cushions. So it shipped really good. Uh, one thing, I know it sounds mini old, but just the spindle nut here came with it. Uh, on the Duralast Golds, uh, they did not come with it. And I actually had one when I first got that um, Milwaukee impact wrench, actually spun the threads right out of this. Uh, and I couldn't, I didn't have a replacement. So I had to go and back to the parts store. They were actually nice enough to open up another box of a different brand, give me a spindle nut off of it. Again, this is a really nice feature that, you, that, you come, that comes with it because you can't just go and buy this replacement one like you can like a caliper bolt. All right, I'm not gonna be able to do all this one-handed, but I'm gonna show you what's going on. So we went ahead and this should be relatively easy. It should be pretty self-explanatory. This one is gonna be towards the outside of the pickup. You're gonna put your other end on here onto those splines. On the middle of these splines, back here that come out of the pickup, there's a there's like a lock washer is what it looks like. It stays around there. That's actually the kind of lock that holds the splines together or holds it in on those splines so it doesn't work its way out. So it's a locking pin, it should be staying on there. Uh, it's not something you replace, it doesn't come with the new ones. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna line up your splines. I put a little bit of anesthesia on there. I did not paint those things or soak them in it. Just barely brush a little bit of anesthesia over. Don't wanna go crazy. 
just so I don't have more rust issues later on. And then all you're gonna do is line that up and you're gonna take your half shaft, hold it kind of here and here, and just push that in until it shoves all the way on until it meets up to that dust plate right over there. And that dust plate is what's covering up all of your um, components inside. All right, I got them in. I actually probably could have done that on camera one-handed. These DTA uh, half shafts so far, I mean, first impression, they're really nice. There's a really good quality boot on them. They feel much different than the other ones I've had before. Much better, I think it's neoprene, uh, that it has the coated around it and everything. They actually feel really nice. The, the other thing with the Duralast, I actually had one of these bands break off, so I had to buy something to reband them. Even though my problem was on the inside that failed, uh, actually, this popped off, grease went everywhere. I was able to find it quick enough and I fixed it. So now, all you're gonna do is do the reverse. Okay, now we ran everything. I have the ABS wire coming through here. It's already mounted uh, onto the hub itself. If you had to torque that uh, on your own, it'd be 20, uh, sorry, 40 inch pounds, but it should already come assembled. You're gonna run your line up, lock it into this lock here, run it up and reconnect it and push it into all the plastic pieces that you had to begin with. Right now it's time to put in the half shaft into the hub now. So again, for me, it worked better to come this direction. All right, we're connected. Came right through, splines lined right up, came in. Again, double check everything. We've already hidden the bolts to the hub assembly we torque those now we're going to move on to the tie rod end and the ball joint upper ball joint All right, now we want to torque our upper ball joint to 40 foot-pounds. Okay, now we need to torque our upper ball joint to 40 foot-pounds. I do have a wobble extension on here, but it's okay because I'm staying 90 degrees. If you're going to use extensions or you're going to use anything um, to uh, angle that, you got to make sure you stay at 90 degrees or else you change the torque spec. So again, 40 foot-pounds. Right now we're going to torque our tie rod in. This is going to be 55 foot pounds. All right now we're going to torque our tie rod in at 55 foot pounds. All right, now we're ready for the rotor. Make sure to keep it clean. Don't touch the face of it. And now we're going to start assembling our uh, brake system back. Actually, I'm going to put a lug nut on here real quick, just so it'll hold this rotor still. Perfect. Okay. Make sure you have a good hold on this. You don't want all your pads to fall out or any of your brake lines to be pulled. And we got lucky. It fell right on. 
if it won't go right in, you're going to have to push the brakes back. Uh, you can, I'll link all these kind of tools and stuff in the description, but uh, there's a little tool you can use just to push it back. Um, and, and that'll actually make it to where you can get over, over the rotor pretty easily. All right, now these back caliper bracket bolts are going to be torqued to 130. All right, we went through, we checked everything, it's all torqued. The last thing we have is the axle nut. It's gonna be the 36 mil bolt. This is gonna to torque down to 185 foot pounds. So what I do first is just hammer that on, uh, make it tight. I watched the half shaft, it pulled through. I'm gonna double check the backside, make sure it all looks straight. Put the tire on, torque the wheels, drop it, and then we'll torque that to 185. That way it's not spinning on us. All right, now we got our wheel back on. We're gonna to torque the wheels. This is at 130 foot pounds. Make sure you go in a star pattern. And then move on to the axle nut at 185. All right, last thing is we torqued that to 185. Uh, it's good to drive that for a little bit. Maybe give it five or ten miles, come back, check that axle nut again, just make sure it's staying at 185. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was helpful. If you want to help the channel, just like and subscribe. It really helps us grow. Thanks.